Where do you start with Carol King? <laughs> you know, I wasn't uh, really all that familiar with her music before I started on the process of Beautiful. I certainly knew some of her songs, but I think I have the experience that a lot of the audience members have, which is when they come see the show, it's like one song after another, and you feel like, oh my gosh, she wrote that, and she wrote that. You know, she wrote The Locomotion, and We Love Me Tomorrow, and Take Good Care of My Baby, with her um, writing partner and husband at the time, Jerry Goffin. And it's just, it's this amazing, amazing canon of music. Oh, no! I don't want to do this. You might see construction in the city. Oh, they got this whole thing ripped up. I sort of knew going into it that, <laughs> that maybe it could go really well or it could go really poorly because if I screwed it up, like, it, it, people, I'm amazed every night at the stage door. People have such a love for her. People come up to me with tears in their eyes and say, this was the soundtrack to my life. This was the soundtrack to my 20s or my college years or I wore this record out. I mean, people had such a strong emotional connection to this music and through the music, I think, to this woman. That, um, and that's one of the reasons why I feel like I really have to like up the ante every night to give to give people what they what they expect. Here we are. We go this way. My food is here. The wonders of Seamus. Come on in. For like 40 minutes. How long? Don't you know when you left? Still feels so cold. Yeah, it's been here for a while. This is Giovanni. Maybe it's still alive. I know. I first started singing when I was very little, probably three or four. I remember my mother did tell me once I was in preschool or like pre-preschool or something like that. It was like the sunshine room. And um, some student's mother, we were doing something, we must have been singing some song, and, and some mother just turned to another mother and went, well, that child will never need a microphone. So I guess I was, uh, fairly loud and proud of it in the beginning. I don't know, I just always loved to sing. I, I would do it without knowing it. I still do it without knowing it. Uh, oh, okay. See, and then we find out whether things are occurring. So I'll sign in. James is out. Rebecca's out. Okay, so Sarah Shepard's on mom doesn't write and Tansky's conducting. Okay. What else is going on? Not much. Here's our birthday club. When his birthday's coming up? August. Jeb 11th. He loves coconut cake and he hates lemon filling. Just good things to know. <laughs> and then we come down this way. My parents are both actors and both singers. Um, my mom did a lot of musical theater earlier in her career. My dad's sort of more so now. Um, earlier in his career, he did less, less singing and more just straight acting stuff on stage. But um, there was always a lot of music it's great to be in a family of actors in the sense that people get it. You know, the things that I think that um, make us strange and wonderful, they kind of get it. And they understand the ups and downs and they understand that there's hardly any certainty involved. This is my very um, beautiful, large new dressing room that they have for me. And then there's a lot of uh, mail around because people send me beautiful things. Somebody just sent me this drawing, which I think is amazing. I'm such a perfectionist, which is stupid, I guess, in an artistic career, in life in general, because there is no such thing, but um, I, I am kind of a workaholic and a perfectionist, and so in some ways, no, I'm never satisfied. Every once in a while, there'll be a moment in a specific show, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll feel like, that went really well that night, or I was, that was, that was real, or that, that really rang true to me. I felt really good about that. And then sure enough, in the next scene, I'll like, do something that I, I am not pleased with at all. You know what, I think the thing is to, to try to not hang on to those moments because then if you do, you've already missed the next one. And my job is to be in the moment as possible while still looking up for like, 
you know, things that go wrong or not falling over a prop that's in a different place or something like that. But I don't think I really am ever satisfied. Before the show starts, I do always, we get ready and I get in my, my first outfit and the wig and everything and everything's underdressed. And then I always go into the wig room and I say hi to every, because of my room's right right by the wig room in the sound time. It's kind of hard to catch everybody before the show because everybody comes at different times. But um, our stage manager, Johnny Krause, who's usually running backstage right, we just do a little, we just have a little namaste moment before we head out and start. Because once it starts, I don't, I don't really stop. I'm gonna get a couple breaks here and there, and then an intermission, but it's pretty much like you get on the train and you ride it. Is this little number with its cool macrame? That's not macrame. It's almost macrame belt. And my cute little denim skirt. And then uh, most of the shoes, yeah, see, most of the shoes are already upstairs because most of my stuff is preset. The only two things, these are actually the only outfits that I get into. Um, down here in the dressing room, everything else is on deck. All the changes happen up there. So I do top of show and top of act two. Um, those are the only two changes that happen here. So these are top of show shoes and top of act two shoes. I do get nervous sometimes. I hope, knock on wood, I never get stage fright. I don't, I don't know what I do. Uh, I've had days, I think you just have days sometimes when you're really tired and you just kind of zone out and you're like, how, how are we gonna do this today? I usually work for flat footwear anyway, but. And I have, I have a couple pairs because sometimes I did, no, I do use slippers in the show once because um, I do have to, uh, I have very high shoes at one point and I like to take them off right after I get, right after I leave the stage. I think you get out there and, um, and something else just sort of takes over the, the show starts and the music starts and the lights come on and and there is I think there's just if you've done the work there's something that kind of takes over and usually if I if I am afraid or if I or if I get nervous before a show it usually starts to subside once the show proper starts one of these days one of these days I'll organize it here's like tags of things that I need to return you know it becomes like your second apartment sometimes which is nice my forever 21 returns on top of um, Sweet Baby James. Jeb, was, Jeb has been loaning me records. This is way cool. Okay, so we've got a lot of really good ones. Um, is this sacrilege? Should we be putting Carol on? See, it's all about the crackle. And there they are, the captain and Tennille. They don't make them like that anymore. With every note I play, I play with love. With every word I say. Isn't that voice? Um, I've got some other good pictures over here. This is Carol and Jerry. Very young. And I'm not sure, sure who's recording session, but it's dusty. Sorry, guys. That's, I mean, I love that when you can, you can really look at the, you can be like, that's, that's who I'm playing. That's, it's very grounding, I guess. I don't know. But you're like, those were the real people. Those were the, it's just very cool to find the person you're playing. And you can't always do that. You can find pictures of the era or whatever, but to actually see the real people, it's really amazing. It's very unique, I think. I don't think there's any golden piece of advice that someone can give that's like, if you do this, if you follow these five steps, it's going to be great, and you're going to hit it big, and you're going to have a consistent career, and you're going to have a place. Um, I, I think it's... Uh, I think there's a plan for everybody, but it's sort of a mix between a plan and a crapshoot, I think. Um, but I think I really still believe that if, you, that if you do good work, it will be noticed. It might not ever be noticed in the way that you, you think it's going to be, but if you, if you do the work, someone will notice. 
And it's like all the stuff you learned in kindergarten, which is be kind to people and learn how to share and play with others. That really applies in the theater, I think. Um, you know, from, from my experience anyway, it really is all about relationships, whether it's the relationships with your, you know, your cast members or your crew or your producers or your press agents or, you know, and your relationship with the audience. It's all about, it's all about people. It's like, I don't think you have to um, like knock people out of the way to get ahead. I think that can work for a while, but I think the cream does rise to the top and if, and, and I think there's a way to, I hope there's a way to, to do really good work and be a good person at the same time. You guys looking cool? Great. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> hey, we're the Deafening and we play rock and roll. We're in the Theater Mania kitchen. Baby, let's twist. Come on and twist for me. Come on and make me shout. Come on and twist for me. Come on and turn it out. I sing the better my voice gets uh, it's like the more you work out um, and the more kind of in, in tune you get your instrument the better the better it sounds or the better you are the more you play the better you get so it's exactly like that the more I sing the more busy I am during the week the better I sound during my shows here at Headwood My band uh, is a very important part of my life, um, mainly because it gave me a really great creative outlet that I didn't have in other avenues. And, um, and it was a great way for me to kind of express myself in um, song on stage without having to be a part of their, like a gigantic <laughs> production. Like I could do it myself. Thank you. Bye Thank guys. You. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait. It better be good. Thanks, <laughs> Pat. Thanks, guys. I think the first take that we did of the song was better. I just felt like I should say it. Yeah, I feel like the first take was better. The first take was better? Yeah. Really? Can someone hit, um, so? Yeah, it was better for me. The band, they like to write their songs really high, and they're guitarists, so they don't like to listen to me when I want to change the key. <laughs> and so they make me sing in an original key, which forces me to extend my range. And, uh, and in doing that, it, uh, it just made my voice this kind of like muscle. It's like, it's almost like, you know, uh, your, your voice is a muscle, and if you could imagine my voice, it would be like Arnold Schwarzenegger. All right, guys, bye. All right. See you later. See you. See you. Sorry. Hurry. Right. Bye. Stop training. Um, well, I see Yitzhak is a drag queen, but he is a biological man. So essentially, I'm not actually playing it. A drag king. I'm actually playing a biological male who is a drag queen. So, wrap your head around that. <laughs> Being a drag queen is uh, very interesting, especially since I get to do it every day, um, except for twice a week, but sometimes I do it on my own because, I don't know, I like it so much. <laughs> um, it's, it's grounding to play a man. It, it feels 
it's very different. It's like once you get into the makeup and the hair and, and you put the outfit on, you, you, it totally changes who you are and you become this character, this man. I, I definitely think differently. I definitely speak differently. Um, uh, I am a different person when I, when I, when I do drive. It's Playing a man is just like, um, it's more grounding and it, it's kind of taught me to, well it's, it's kind of, it, it's taught me that um, men def definitely think a little bit more black and white than women do. Uh, they definitely think a lot less emotionally than women do. Um, and they do like to hide things. They like to hide how they really feel about stuff. I mean, it's. Uh, it's definitely different than how I respond to things, which is very outwardly emotional. Um, I'm always uh, wanting to give you my opinion <laughs> on how I feel, um, but uh, but playing Itzak, it's like he's very um, keeps everything very inward and uh, internal, and um, acts out in different ways than like a woman would. So he acts out like in aggressive ways or or in um, uh, self-destructive ways. Uh, physically to get ready for the character, um, it has a lot to do with the costuming. So the boots are really heavy, they're steel toe, and um, and the jacket is really heavy, and um, it helps boost my shoulders up. Um, and that helps me with how I walk and how I act. I also wear a piece, which uh, is like a, it's called a packer, and um, it's I wear it in my pants, and, and it also kind of tells, like, informs me how to walk, because there's something there when there's usually not. Um, but uh, to prepare for the character originally, I studied a lot of men, and I watched them walk, just regular men. I watched them walk around the city, and I kind of categorized their walks, and I, and I picked the ones that I felt were most appropriate for the character, for Yitzhak. I, I know the film Hedwig and the Angry Inch, and um, and I love the movie. I saw the show. I saw the original show as well, and um, it did affect it because um, I I watched it and and I knew the character, and um, I knew what I wanted to do with the character, which um, was very helpful because. I had a better understanding of the character from watching the show back in the day and from also seeing the movie. And um, I knew kind of how I wanted Yitzhak to be. Um, that was maybe not like the movie, but I also um, took from Miriam Shore her original kind of her toughness. She was a, she was a very tough um, Yitzhak and I, and I wanted to and I, and I took some of that on. I have a lot of rituals before the show. Um, <laughs> I, I write Hedwig a card as Yitzhak before every show. Um, that it, it's, it can range from a knock-knock joke to, um, to explaining my horrible day or to um, asking for money or it just has a little it has nothing really to do with the show but more to do with our relationship and sometimes she'll give me a card back which is always horrible <laughs> um, and um, and I do that every day and um, and then uh, just getting into costume and makeup really and hair it, that really is a ritual in and of itself and it centers me um, I, I don't really vocally warm up. I do a little bit of a vocal warm up. It's like lip trills and, and I sound like a dying cat <laughs> because I just want my top range to sound strong and good. Um, but, uh, and, oh, well, and also the band, when we get, to, we get together down, um, on stage about five minutes before the show starts and we huddle up and we come up with something to do for Hedwig as she walks by as she, and she always insults us. And um, that can range from like acting out a scene or like spelling out words or anything. So we do that every show, and um, and that's that's basically like it, every every week that goes by, my pre-show ritual gets longer and longer. 